I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will try to understand what are logarithmic functions and how are they really related with the exponential functions. So let's look back at exponential functions and try to understand what logarithmic functions are. On this graph paper I have shown graph of an exponential function. Well we can say this is an exponential function since it increases rapidly from almost zero to infinitely large value. Now, can you figure out the equation for this exponential function? Let's try to find out. So what we will do is we'll investigate this particular graph, try to reach some values, put them here in a table, and then find the equation for the exponential function. So let us say, uh, let's begin with zero itself. So at 0 the value of the function is 1 and at 1 the value of the function is 2 right so let me write down these values so at 0 we have the function value as 1 at 1 it is 2 and at 2 what do we have at 2 it is 4 and at 3 it is 8 correct so so at 2 it is 4 and at 3 it is 8. Let us also see some values on minus 1 side and minus 2. Minus 1 is almost half, minus 2 is half of that. That means quarter. So we'll have minus 1 is half and minus 2 is kind of quarter, right? So let's write quarter here. Okay. And we also notice that as x approaches negatively large value, so let me write here as x approaches negative large value, y approaches 0. So we have a horizontal asymptote which is y equals to 0. The function is never 0, right? It's always greater than 0. And we also see here that as x approaches positive large value, y approaches positive large value. So we're, we're adding infinity for that. So that is the kind of function we have. So we can write x here. So we have x here and y. And these are the values for our function. What do you think this function is? Well, the first difference which we can find out that really helps us to figure out what kind of function we are dealing with. So what we find here is that, let's start with one. It's easy, right? So if we do 2 minus 1, we get 1. If I do 4 minus 2, we get 2. And uh, 8 minus 4 is 4. Okay. On this side, if I do 1 minus half, I get half. And half minus 1 fourth is 1 over 4. So what we really see here is that the first difference, this is, this is the first difference for us. What we really see here is that the first difference has is a multiple of 2, right? So here, as we move, we find that 2 times 1 fourth is half. Double of half, 2 times half, I should say, is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2. So we have a multiple of 2 here, right? So that means it's an exponential function with base 2, right? Now we can write down the equation for the function as 2 to the power of x. In general, when you are looking at an exponential function, the critical point which helps us to find the equation is the value at 2, uh, the value at 1. So at 1, the value of the function is, is the base of the function, right? If it is not transformed, right? So, so that at 1, if it is 2, base is 2, right? And the other way to figure out is finding the first difference. That also helps. So that is how we know that this is exponential function and it is 2 to the power of x. I hope we have gone into details more than enough to get to our exponential function. The real topic here is to find the inverse of this exponential function, right? So now we'll go from here to finding inverse of this function. One way to find inverse is graphical solution. That as you know, that if x, y are the coordinate values for the function, then we can flip them. 
and get the values for inverse of the function correct now as you can see from here we can actually write down all our values so as far as the x y values for 2 to the power of x is concerned I could write this as minus 2 1 by 4 minus 1 half I mean this should be negative uh, no these are all positive yeah minus 4 half okay yeah and 0 is 1 1 is 2 2 is 4 3 is 8 so what we note here is the y values are always greater than 0 right so we are always in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 2 so as far as exponential function is concerned domain is all real numbers and the range is greater than 0 so let me include that also here so we have domain as x belongs to real numbers and range as y belongs to real number where y is greater than 0 okay so let me push this page a bit forward okay so we get coordinate points on the function itself inverse we can flip them so if I make y values as the x values and x as the y values I get the inverse of this function right so we get 1 over 4 minus 2 half minus 1 1 0 2 1 4 2 and uh, 8 3 so that becomes the inverse of this function one way to graph this is we can actually even without doing this we can actually graph from the graph so if I consider this point which is at uh, 0 1 diagonally half unit will give me this point right so that is the reflection on the line which is y equals to x right so if you draw diagonally a line y equals to x it goes through the origin and if you reflect your function on this line you always get inverse of the function and we know this technique right so let's apply this technique and this point which is 1 2 we go half and half we come to this point which is 2 1 perfect now here the point is 2 4 so it is one unit away I can go diagonally one unit so I reach here which is 4 2 that works for us correct now here it is one unit two unit and a half half one two so kind of let me just just make a mark here okay now let's go to this side for minus one we have half and if I'm going diagonally here so I will reach a point which is kind of close to this point right so basically what we get it at half we get minus one do you see that so at half we get minus one so so let's say this is my point at half it is minus one this is one fourth very very close to the x-axis so it will be very close to the y-axis at one fourth right so there you are oh, well so one over four this is the point okay so one over four reciprocal is four so we have gone well that's too small to check so anyway so we'll go from here one two one two that is how we get this point right now this point we can go slightly more but it is one unit and then more so that point was actually here right so we get these points let me redo these points for me since i just messed it up okay so here what we look at this is at minus four right so we got one unit one unit one unit one unit slightly above correct now at minus two go diagonally one unit one unit and so that is that is the second point correct now the third point here is from here right so it is it is going to minus one will be right here correct so half and more that's correct so these are the points which can be connected and we get the inverse of our function right connecting these points so let me connect them with with let's say this color so what we get here is is a function which is approaching negative infinity on this side and on this side it is kind of increasing like this now that is the inverse of the given exponential function now it's kind of a new function for us and we'll write here 
Since we are working with an exponential function whose base is 2, we name this function as log to the base 2 of x. So that is the logarithmic function, a new function for you. It is inverse of the exponential function. Right? You can also look into my videos C1, which will explain you how we really get log functions algebraically from the exponential function. Here, graphically, you are seeing how to graph inverse of the exponential function and then we know that inverse of an exponential function is called the logarithmic function. So the relation between exponential and logarithmic functions are that they are inverse of one another, right? Now, since they are inverse, their domain and range should also flip, correct? So let's check that part. So what is, do you think, the domain of logarithmic function? Now, as you can see, it is always greater than zero, right? So x value cannot be negative here. So the domain is that x belongs to real numbers. However, x, I mean, x should be greater than zero, right? Now, you can see the range of exponential function becomes the domain, correct? How about the range of this function? Range of this function is that y is actually going from minus infinity to plus infinity. So there is no restriction on the range of this function. So the domain of exponential function becomes the range of logarithmic function, right? But I think with this example, you have a clear view, a picture of logarithmic function. It is, as you can see, inverse of exponential function, right? And from here, you can get many things. Since it is inverse of your exponential function, we can say a lot of properties about it. Exponential function has its own limitations. The limitations are that the base of exponential function should be greater than, should be what? Cannot be 1, right? And it cannot be negative, correct? So, for an exponential function, we know, uh, so some properties, let's, let's now consider some properties of both. So we'll consider properties of both exponential as well as logarithmic function here, right? Exponential and log functions. So, <clears throat> so there in the base of exponential function, we know it, it, it is never equal to 1 because if the base is 1, then you get a straight line. Correct? So in logarithmic function also, there is a restriction, correct? We should not have base of 1, correct? Since 1 to the power of anything is just 1, right? So it should not be 1. Second restriction about the base is that it has to be greater than 0, right? So the base of logarithmic function should be greater than 0. It cannot be negative. So it is non-negative not equal to 1. That is the base of log. When we say base of log, as you have seen, I've written logarithmic function. We write log, log as base and x. So this base, this is the base. When exponential function is written as b to the power of x, correct? So that base cannot be negative and it has to be non, not equal to 1, right? So it is the non-negative integer not equal to 1. That's kind of a very important restriction on both logarithmic and exponential functions, right? Since they are inverse of one another, correct? And the other important thing which you saw is how their domains and ranges are related. I think with this, we have enough knowledge and we can move forward with more examples on logarithmic function. As an exercise, what you can do is, from this graph, can you tell me what is log to the base 2 of uh, 2? And what is log to the base 2 of 8? And can you explain me why your answers are as you are saying, correct? So, log to the base 2. So, this, this data is actually for log to the base 2 of x, correct? So, find the value from the graph. Log to the base 2 of 2 is what? From the data, it is 1. Can you read it? Yes, you can. From the data, 8 is 3. Can you read it? Well, if I extend, I can. Now, why is it so? Well, one of the reasons is, you know, if I convert to exponential functions, right, let us say this value is a, 
then what is 2 to the power of a equals to b it has to be equal to 2 so a is 1 do you see that now if it is b for example then in that case 2 to the power of b should be 8 what value of b will give me 8 it is 3 right therefore b should be equals to 3 in this case so these are few things which we will soon learn in logarithmic functions in following videos i hope with this knowledge we are good to understand and explore more examples on logarithmic functions i'm anil kumar you can subscribe and learn a lot thank you and all the best